Welcome to today's video. Behind me, we've got two backseat heat on your boilers. I'm going to be showing you how to do a full service on these. So we've got two of them, but I'm only going to be showing you, I'm going to be servicing both of them, but I'm only going to be showing you the service on one of them because the other one's going to be exactly the same. Now this will be the same as if you've got a main heat only boiler or if you've got the Potterton Ashore heat only boiler as well, I think. Very simple boilers to service, to do a full strip down service on these. I have done a video on one of these on how to change the combustion control unit, which I'll put a link in the description below. And you can also click the link up here as well. So, but the servicing aspect of it is going to be pretty much the same part as doing changing the combustion control unit. But I'm also going to show you how I clean out the main heat exchanger as well and so on and so forth. So let's get the case off. Let's get to it and let's crack on. Now it's been a little while since I've stripped one of these out, so I'm gonna go through it step by step again. But you've got to take off this, you've got two silencers on here or snorkels, whatever you want to call them, flue collectors, various different names for them. So you've got to take this one off, you've got to take this one off, and then you basically need to remove the gas valve, the fan assembly, which is part of the PCB, and the burner casing all in one go. So it just comes as one unit. It's called a combustion control unit. Now, when I was working in social housing, I used to find that a lot of these used to fail. And I believe I was told by Baxi that it was something to do with the fact that when they were fitted on wire plan systems, it didn't like it. And I think it was something to do with the voltages sending, coming back from the three port. It used to fry the PCBs on them. So you used to get the four red flashes, which indicated a fan fault, which basically meant you had to change the whole thing. So this is the only downside about this, that if the gas valve goes, or if the fan goes, or if the PCB goes, doesn't matter, you have to buy the whole thing. I don't know if they've changed that now, but as far as I know, you still have to buy the whole combustion control unit, which they're not cheap, which is a bit of a downside. Upside is it's a very nice, easy boiler to service. There's not a lot that you need to do other than brush out the main heat exchanger. I've also been told that you shouldn't actually pour water through it or flush through it with uh, water or anything like that because it can block up the uh, heat exchanger and the sump. So they've said that just get a hoover and just hoover it through, brush it, brush any sediment through and just hoover it out. Don't pour any water down it because you don't want the bottom of it to get all blocked up there with the debris from it. Obviously, I'm going to clean out the condensate trap as well. And the other benefit of these boilers is when you're wiring them, they don't need a permanent live. They only need a switch live, neutral and earth. So haven't got to worry about a pump overrun, a permanent live or anything like that. The boiler will only come on when it's got demand. So let's get cracking. Let's start by taking it all apart. I'll show you step by step how I'm doing it and then we'll go from there. So the first part is fairly easy. Literally just got that little point on there that allows this to just pop out and then pull it to the left. So that's that bit off. So just pop that on the side there. Now this one, literally just pop this clip up like that. Pop this forward and then pull it out. There we go. So that's your two silencers out. And now we've got space to get to the gas valve nut. And we've got the two clips. I'm, I'll go through this step by step as I do it now. Okay, so let's start dismantling this whole bit. Right, firstly, let me turn the gas off because I've done a tightness test, but gas is still on at the meter. So turn it off from there. Uh, nope, that spanner's too big. Okay, so let's start taking apart the combustion control unit. The gas is isolated here. I've done a tightness test already, so now the tightness test is sound, so I can do another test. I can probably just do a local test afterwards from here to make sure that we haven't got any drop coming after this because this is the only bit that I'm going to be cracking open. So undo that. Obviously, power's been all turned off as well. Oh, that's still quite hot, so that's done. Undo your gas valve connection there. You need to undo this little plug here as well. This is like a coding plug, or I think you just pull it out all together. There's a little tab at the back. There we go. So that should just pull out. So that comes out with the PCB. Next, you want to undo this Ethernet type cable. Up here, you've got a little tab there. Pop that. And that should allow this case to pull forward. So now here is where you've got all your other cables as well. So you've got your mains, so undo that from there. 
Now you've got your electrode leads here, so you'd literally just pop that out from there. Earth lead off of there. See, so the fan sits inside the PCB pretty much. Once that's done, you can close that back up again. It'll just make it easier for when it comes to removing the whole thing. You know, I don't actually know if I needed to undo that because I think it's all going to come apart anyway. Doesn't matter. So that's the electrical bits all disconnected. Now we need to undo these two. Now I'm going to have to do this with the camera down because it's just easier to do it. But I just showed in order to undo them, literally just pop that forward. So that flow pipe's going to be hot. So oh. okay. So now that's released the clip there. And that's released the clip there. Sorry, that is still quite hot. So now I'm going to get my gloves on and this is the part that I find a little bit tricky and why you need two hands because you've got the top of the flue turret there which kind of gets in the way you can see up there it can be a little bit tricky getting out so you've got to wiggle it wiggle it wiggle it to get it out so I'll show you how I do it everyone will find their own way of doing it but this is how I get them out. Right, I forgot to mention there's another connector ribbon cable that goes on the bottom here for sensors. Just that one. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done one of these, so that's why I knew there was another cable, but yeah, I just didn't see it. But there's another cable that goes on there. It's a ribbon cable, so you need to pull that off as well. Now, the reason why I struggle to get this one off is because it's never been serviced before. So the burner, which is here, so now that comes off separately. However, what was happening is where this had never been serviced, the burner was getting stuck inside the main heat exchanger. So see, I can't pull that out over this. This part is flat, so that you can lift off and bring it out, but the rubber was all getting stuck to this. Now I've spoken to Baxi to find out if these seals need replacing. They said only replace them if they're damaged on inspection, and this one is absolutely fine. Just got to give the burner a bit of a, a brush, basically, that's it. And I've got air duster, so I'll, I'll clean that through. This, you don't need to do anything with it. You just leave it on the side. And then the heat exchanger, like I said, I'm just going to give it a little brush and then get my little hoover out and hoover through it. Not going to be flushing it through the water because the waterways down here get really narrow. So we don't want this to get blocked up. Oh, someone's calling me, bear with me. And... Um, where was I? Yeah, so we're just going to brush this through, hoover it through, and then pop this all back together again, and then test everything. So you might notice this little R symbol on the main heat exchanger. That's because these are the same main heat exchangers that they use in the Romeja boilers, which is part of the Baxi family. So that's why you got the R, the Romeja R on there. Let's have a look, quick look inside the main heat exchanger. I'll try and get as best of an angle as I can. I mean, it is a bit of a tight squeeze. Let's try from the other side. There we go. So you can see how that narrows right down at the bottom, which is why Baxi recommend 
not to actually flush it through because if that gets choked up it's a new main heat exchanger and we don't want that to happen so it's literally just give it a little brush um give it a little hoover get out any sediment i mean it doesn't look too dirt, too bad anyway and then the rest of it i'll probably just flush it through here so we'll clean the sump out flush a bit of water through there get rid of that muck in there and then we'll clean out the condensed trap afterwards as well and then pop this all back together it's a very simple boiler to service uh the trickiest part is just getting the combustion control unit out like i said where it's not been serviced before the burner was literally stuck to the top of the burner casing and that's why i was struggling to get it out but normally if it's a fairly newish boiler or if it's been serviced regularly that would just pop out bring it out give it all this a clean and then pop it back together and then do your 26.9 check so let's just clean the main heat exchanger out now so now that that's been cleaned out the burner you want to make sure that it goes back in the right place You've got this little tab at the front that tab goes on the front left so it goes in that gap there so all you want to do is pop that in like so make sure the seal and everything's on there properly and it should if you've done it right it would literally just sit down like that and there you can see that little rubber tab there and that will stick out when the burner casing goes back on to let you know that the burner is in the correct position so that's all in like i said it's just a little light brush through you don't want to go too ham on these because if you do you do have the chance of potentially blocking the main heat exchanger which you saw it literally just narrows right down so you don't want to mess around with that brush it through use my little regan duster duo to hoover it out as well so that's all done and now i'm gonna reassemble it all back together i'll show you how to reassemble it. it will be a lot easier than when i took it apart but yeah let's see See how much easier that went in? Because that rubber's not sticking to it, so it literally just slides in, pops down, and then these clips, make sure that this, you've got a hook on there, that's gonna hook onto the bottom of the main heat exchanger. It's there, see where it's sitting above it? Pull it down, back, and then that clamps down. Down there, pull that back, clamps down. And that's it you haven't got to worry about talking up any screws or anything like that it's literally just two spring clamps and that's it now let's do the electrical connections back up so this is that ribbon cable that i forgot to take off initially so that goes on there mains cable on there earth on there electrode leads Right on there, that's on, and right, so now yeah, these will just basically tuck in under there. That Ethernet type cable goes in under there. I didn't need to undo the gas valve connection, and in fact, even the chip, we don't need to remove it because that's all part of the ribbon cable when you undo it. Put this back together. Now I've checked the condition of that fiber washer. There's nothing wrong with it, so I am going to reuse it, but obviously I'm going to do a tightness test to make sure it's all okay. I, with fiber washers, I find if they're going to perish, it's usually going to be when they're wet. So if you've got a water connection on it with a gas connection, it's unlikely that it's going to get damaged or perished. Right, that's done. Now, first one is this one. So, silencer, pop that in there. Push that in there. Right, and that's on. And then we've got this snorkel, which literally that goes around the back into there. So, let's bring it around the back, marry it up. That goes in, and then swings down and sits on your p1 test point there we go so that's literally all back together i'm going to do another local tightness test here 
and then make sure that we haven't got any drop as long as we're all good i can then start on that one and then i'll come back to this one and do my 26 9 checks and then move on to the next one oh yeah condense trap let's do that literally just that pull it forward and then you got under your right so that's got this marshmallow elbow on it and then all you've got to do from here is literally you just pull it down like that so bring that out so that's got a bit of dirt sink at the bottom so i'll clean that out fill that back up with water and then pop that back in as well Right, it's all been done, it's all been tested. <clears throat> I had to do it quickly because obviously it's quite a warm day. So the boilers have been running before, so they were reaching temperature fairly quickly. So I've done my 26.9 checks, but just gonna talk you through how to get this into service mode now. So easy, probably the easiest boiler to get into service mode. This is your chimney sweep button. Literally just keep that pressed for about three seconds. Now it flashes orange. So when it first goes into chimney, that's it, that's in service mode now. Once it goes into service mode, it initially starts on low flame. And the only way that you can really tell is you've got to listen to it. Now, you're not really going to be able to hear it over the camera, but once you work on these, you'll know. So that's running on low flame at the moment. If I press that again, that fan will start ramping up. You probably can't even tell by looking at it, but that's ramping up now. So you do your maximum, you do your minimum. Your maximum test point on the gas valve is just up there in that corner and your minimum you've got to take off this cap with a former Allen, Allen key and then adjust the minimum on there as well. So let's just take that out of service mode now. So to do it, you just keep reset pressed and that's it. That's out of service mode and back into normal. Key thing to note on this and it does say in the MIs as well, so double check. You can only have a 0.4 difference between your maximum co2 reading and the minimum co2 reading and they want it to be 9.3 plus maximum they want it to be 9.3 percent plus or minus 0.1 i think so you're either allowed 9.2 9.3 or 9.4 and whatever your maximum is the minimum has to be within 0.4 of whatever your maximum is so if it's 9.3 your minimum's got to be 8.9 if it's 9.4 the minimum's got to be 8 if it's 9.2 so nine, if it's 9.2, your minimum's got to be 8.8. .8. Excuse the humming noise, they've got booster pump running there as well. So your, that's your maximum minimum settings. You just adjust it on the gas valve there. Other than that, it's all done, straightforward. So I'm out of here, I'm on to the next one. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I'm trying to do a lot more sort of walkthrough videos on specific jobs as well. So boiler servicing and breakdowns. If you find this useful, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I really appreciate it because I take a lot of time to try and talk you guys through. So a lot of this stuff I've learned on my own as I've had to go along in social housing, you know, learn it off my own back. I'm now trying to give back and help other engineers out as well. So if you do find my how-to videos useful, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys on the next video. Enjoy.